I got admitted to a psychiatric hospital on my 25th birthday, the same year they took Iris. I don't remember much leading up to it, except that I checked out of reality. Iris disappeared, and so did I. Later, my mom told me that I started talking about strange things, and eventually it escalated to me believing I was communicating with the universe, and that it told me exactly where to find Iris. But Iris was dead. I saw them bury her. Who knows? Maybe I was communicating with the universe. I don't know anymore. So, Agnes Flores, 25, psychosis, believes she is communicating with the dangerous, possibly willing to harm. Okay, Agnes, so I'm going to ask you a few questions and get you settled in here. Okay, so you voluntarily admitted yourself today? Is that what I did? Are you planning on harming yourself or others? No. Do you have any history of mental illness in your family? No, not that I know of. Okay, so I'm going to need you to give me your clothes, shoes, and any other items you have on you. No, we'll do it in our examination room. What is this? It'll help. Can I see your tongue? Get some rest. I think I cracked under pressure but the doctors would let me know that actually, I was bipolar. Being bipolar would explain the crying spells on my birthdays, the constant anxiety, and of course, the manic highs where I thought I could do anything. I thought I was just different, but apparently, there's a name for it, and it needs to be medicated. When I was manic, I even thought I was special. I guess at 25, you're officially sealed in. This is my diagnosis. This is what I'm dealing with now. Before, I could just chalk it up to life or just being a strange kid, but now... Now it has a label. Now I'm mentally ill. Being in a psychiatric hospital is unlike any other experience. It's not like the movies where people are constantly screaming and the outside world continues to move and breathe. Well, there was one woman who was constantly yelling on the phone in the room beside me. I wondered how she was calling people until I realized the rooms didn't have telephones. People were just battling their own minds. They needed a break from the world, so their minds took one for them. Those three days became the longest days of my life. Before, my life felt fast, but in these days, time stopped. I thought I'd never leave. My mom came to visit me and couldn't really say anything. She was still torn up about Iris, and she was taking my hospitalization as another punishment God had laid on her for being a bad mother. To her, she just lost both of her girls. I don't blame her for how she felt. I didn't know what to say either. So we've prescribed you two different medications, one for the mood swings, and the other is an antipsychotic for the voices you've been hearing. Well, I don't hear voices anymore, so... That's because of the medication we've been giving you. Don't come back here, Agnes. You're a good kid. Don't come back here? The way she said it made me feel like I did something wrong. I was being punished. I should have been able to control it. The thing about being mentally ill is that no one understands it. They believe the shit they've seen in movies and think we're violent people to be avoided. They think it's something that makes you weak and less, strange and difficult. What they don't understand is that the battle inside our minds is greater than anything they've ever experienced. It makes us strong. I knew nothing in life could be worse than losing Iris and my own mind, so now, now I could do anything. I was free. Mm -hmm.